So collaborative consumption is the idea that there are all these assets in the world, so empty spaces in cars, spare ho rooms in homes, and that with technology you can um, make them liquid through networks and marketplaces. Um, but none of these ideas work unless you have trust. So it's really funny even to talk about it now because it feels like a long time ago, but um, in around 2008, I started to think about how people were sharing music and videos and films over the internet and information. And my hunch was that something bigger was happening, that we would start sharing other assets, that we would realize that all these different assets in our life have something called idling capacity. And that through technology, we could actually sell that capacity. So um, Airbnb had just launched where people were realizing that their holiday homes and their spare rooms and their tree houses and their igloos, that they could sell that capacity. Um, blah, blah, car, the ride sharing platform, that the empty seat in their car had value. Um, and there were hundreds of other platforms, TaskRabbit, where people could make some extra money you know, by fixing shelves or walking someone's dog. And the interesting thing is that I saw this confluence of, of drivers going on. So the first was technology, and, and we really can't underestimate at the time it was a smartphone um, that was taking the friction out of this because it had to be in real time. So you know, if you had to go back to your computer and accept that ride, um, it, it, and he didn't know where that person was, there was too much friction to make this easy. Payments, online payments. So technology was a massive driver. The second thing was economic. Um, so the time the idea was born was actually in the middle of the financial crisis. And two things were happening. One, people were thinking of how they could make some extra money and how they could save money. So it was definitely a cost driver. But I think people were also looking for alternatives outside the traditional system. Um, and th this is what it was, in was interesting, was that it was very sort of counter to the main street. And now it it's become sort of you know, a challenger to uh, many traditional behaviors. The third was environmental, so this idea that if you use underused assets, it could be more efficient. So a good example is everyone was buying like Prius cars, but the car still sits there 23 hours a day. So why not just share one car? And then the fourth one, which I think is the most interesting, was social, societal, um, and that there was a whole, there is a whole generation growing up that have a very different relationship to owning things, and this idea of access over ownership. So you can see it on Spotify, right? Do I need a physical collection of music, or can I just pay on demand to access anything that we need? So. And I think that ties to a deeper thing that the way people would express and they define themselves doesn't need to be through physical ownership anymore. And since then, you can see it because you can see a massive decline in the aspiration to own a car or even have a driving license because people are saying, right, well, I don't even need to car share because in five years' time, the cars will just pick me up. And so it was all those things coming together where I saw that there was a, a paradigm shift around the traditional consumer model. Because a lot of people think it's all peer-to-peer, -peer, like it's all about you have something, I have something. Um, but there's actually business-to-consumer models. Um, so if you think of things like BMW's Drive Now, where they still own the cars, but they facilitate the sharing. Um, Hyatt just bought one fine stay, right? So it's still people's homes, but Hyatt um, do the cleaning, they do the services. So there's real growth in this business-to-consumer model. And then the other space that um, is actually, it's less sexy, but there's a lot of potential is in business to business. So businesses, um, governments, you know, they have, um, so things like liquid space. If you think of like the number of office spaces that just sit there idle, um, Cohelo is a really interesting one um, where they're taking underused hospital equipment and uh, really expensive pieces of equipment that just sit there and then you've got another hospital down the road where they can't deliver that treatment to the patient because they can't afford the machines mm -hmm. and they're figuring out how to share that. So peer-to-peer -peer is one, business to consumer and then business to business as well.